At this point, we're getting really close to calling it done. Not quite there. You'll notice that, for the most part, I left the my plugs, so to say, for the intake for the intake system or for the intake passages all covered up because of all the blowing and all the stuff that was going on you were just never quite sure when uh, you know that you wouldn't drop anything in there you don't want anything coming in contact with your valves that it's not air or fuel I guess in this case so I'm going to clean this up I'm going to clean this up and Let's get the intake manifold on here. All right. I'm gonna need to go backwards because there's a time I turned the engine and uh, suppose some of them got sucked in there. So that was pretty smart of me. No, it was not smart. I blew something out, good. Apparently it was just sticking funny. I made sure, or at least I thought I made sure that I did not send anything into the valve area. Nice, everything's out. No pieces of paper stuck in there. Well, there was a little bit, I'll just get it. I'll pull the camera down because it's something I wanted to talk about. Let's get a little closer here. So here are the tubes, or the, here are the intake passages. You can see anything they're not the cleanest and neither am I trying to uber clean them I don't want any of the gunk going in there in an uncontrolled manner so I don't want to just junk, uh, gunk up the cylinders or the valve or the valves so that's it for the intake tubes that's ready I'll just give it one quick wipe at the end and we should be good to go this is your intake manifold and it's pretty much ready to go but I intend to clean a few things. So I'll look at the bottom surface one more time, make sure it's good. But also these, these are the uh, the ports for your uh, for your fuel injectors. I want to clean these these ports up as best as I can before installing this thing on the engine. Again, I just don't want to clean and all the whatever it is you're cleaning off to end up going to the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. The camera might not catch it. I'll actually turn it off just because it's a mundane task that you don't really need to see. But then during installation, I will want us to pay attention to something down here. This tube, you can get to see it. This one here, it's at the bottom of the throttle body. So we'll, we'll pay attention to that when time comes to install it because it's going to be mating to this part over here. This is one of the major differences between the engines, the the M, what, what do you call it? The JDM one, which is the 2003 and 2004 Infinity M45 engine, or the intake and intake and coolant tube versus the one that you see on the 06 through 2010 M45. Big difference there. So, as I said, I'm going to turn it off, stop recording for a while, save battery and all that. And all I'm doing is cleaning the mating surfaces on the intake side and cleaning the fuel injector ports. So let's put that away and let me do the, the boring stuff then we'll turn it back on when it's when there's fun to see.
it's almost installation time so let's talk about what we are going to do so typically when you buy this kit here's a number dnj ig 647 whenever you buy this kit you usually get this gasket and two of these these gaskets are the ones that end up going right there all right i hope kind of make the correlation there can't remember exactly which one goes where but we'll, we'll get those rearranged anyway these two go right down there and the other side goes pretty much mates with that side okay this other one here is the the part this is a gasket that goes in between the lower and upper manifold collectors right here so if you split these that's what will go there these ones over here usually go to this intake manifold the JDM intake manifold aka the 0304 M45 manifold the the ports are all rounded these ports this ports are the D D shaped ones so what I'd usually do sometime in the past I'd buy a whole kit because it was easier to get it for the older style manifold when you buy them just make sure you get the ones with the right shape i can't remember the number well maybe I, when I, whenever i needed to buy them i ended up buying from back uh back early or something but i did at some point buy a full set for this for this one here just as i said remember that you have d shaped instead of them being oval or oblong shaped so what i usually did just like I've done this one here, I'd remove the fuel, the fuel rail, the fuel injectors, and then I'd remove the whole thing as one piece. I would not separate the lower and the and the upper, because I just figured if I can get this style of manifold gasket cheaper, then I can remove these from there. So that's why I have a bunch of these just hanging out because I was too cheap to. I was too cheap to to buy the correct ones or the the correct ones are not available i can't remember what the driving re uh the main reason was but anyway that's why i have these and as you can see it's more of a graph oil gasket so usually what i have to do there is i try wd-40 scrape 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 it's quite intensive to to get this uh this manifold gasket out so this is what i just wanted to talk about that I do have quite a lot of stuff over here, but I'm not going to use all of it. Let's remove that. Set this down here for now. Okay, now I can play this game and try to make sure everything sits fine. I can already tell that these are in the opposite areas. So let me set this down for a while while I get to arranging things here. Okay, I should have just flipped it. That's all it is. Yes, because these tabs in the corners would usually poke out from that side, if I remember correctly. Then this one here. I'll show you, I'll talk about some things again. The things I wanted to talk about are these. One, you notice it's not a perfect circle. It has a little bit of an angle over the, you know, a notch over there. So do these gaskets. And that angle that notch is there to allow the injectors to go through this side over here again this one is also shaped rather funny but then the notch is supposed to allow the injector that goes in through here to spray into that tube into the head so right now what i'm going to do okay uh, let me let me talk about this a little bit sometimes just because as you can see there's nothing holding these in place sometimes it's set moving around scooting around but what we can do now that we know get some vaseline apply it in the non-contact areas is how i like to do it so here in the middle here here and here then with the vaseline just push it down and it should stay there long enough to not move around right and then i'll do the same here and once i do that i can come and place that down without fear of this moving around when i place it down okay then i'll get some bolts which i do have many of i just can't find them right now well it is that time probably ought to get new gloves but cheap guy 
economical. So I'm gonna flip them the other way. Oh, the dirty side. No problem, no problem at all. Look at that. Clean gloves. Cleanish. Okay, as I was saying earlier. Can't talk with the toothpick in my mouth, it's gonna have to go. So to get these gaskets to sit and to stay put, I'm gonna get a little bit of Vaseline. And the Vaseline will go in relatively harmless places so that when I place it down, it doesn't move. But at the same time, it does not compromise the seal. So squeeze it down. There you go, it's like magic. It's sitting there. A lot better than this one, right? So let's get more. Well, this head is not perfect, but the center is not moving anywhere, so good enough for me. Oh, wow, look at that. Just have to put more. Perfect. Good enough for me. So the tab is hanging out this way, and the other one is hanging out there. Let's get a little closer. Did I show that? These tabs are what I'm talking about. One on the other side. Okay. So let's zoom out a little bit. And now... I mentioned earlier that one thing I needed to do was this here. Oh well, first let's get the intake bolts. I know I have plenty of those. Oh, yep, there they are. I have a whole bag of them, intake manifold. So I need two, three, four, five, ten of them. Of the shorter variety, I believe. Well, I need one long one. No, they're all gonna be short. I'll try my best to pick the cleanest ones. Well, they all look the same. Okay, here it is. One of the first things I need to do is this joint over here. I've done it before. I know that. <laughs> I'm just like, what's wrong today? You know what? I know. set it down I don't know if I mentioned but there are no dowel pins over here so it's kind of sort of all guesswork as to where everything goes I can see most if not all of the ports especially on this side so let me set the the bolt down. This side seems to have shifted a little bit, so I'll lift it up and pull this back.
to show what I was talking about earlier with regards to the the bolts so everything is fine and here's that tab I was talking about you have one two three four there's a fifth one right here that takes a long bolt so long bolt it is all the way down no somehow missed the mark on that one that is not the correct one for some reason okay yeah a little bit of a difference here i don't know what i don't know where i got this one would it be the one that goes here sorry i have no idea it looks a little too short honestly but okay well we'll figure out what that one went here this is a longer bolt and it seems to fit a little better on the other side you have one, two, three, four. The fifth one is here. I did not put this in, and it came with a manifold, and the reason is this. See this cap here? If I'd split the plenum into the upper collector and the lower collector, I would have been able to remove this one. But nope, since I did not, it just always stays there hanging out. And as I said, I want to really figure out where this one came from. Can't have it hanging out with the with the wrong crowd, so to say. <laughs> this is the hose I was trying to fight at the bottom. It did not want to go in. I think what I've done in the past is lifted everything off, lifted this up. Because this other one, this metal part ends right here. It's so close. That's why I couldn't even move this all the way out. Anyway, putting this back in is not gonna be a problem. Don't you worry. It's gonna be one of the easiest parts of the job. Of the job. Removing, um, removing it isn't too bad either. It just gets you if you forget that it exists over there. So when you go to pull the manifold after, you're, after you've removed all the bolts, it's like, gotcha, where are you going? So there you go. I just feel like in the past I have had to do something to maneuver it in that I needed to install it before installing everything. However, this time seems like there's no problem. So good enough. I'll remember to put the clamp, the clamp there. And what is this one clamped to? I think one of the tubes that comes around, which I need to find by the way the tubes that go all around the manifold and we are close to getting done man this is pretty good so obviously here I could have done the PCV valve with the intake manifold there it's just that normal uh, during normal in its normal layout you have the fuel rail right over there and the fuel rail is what usually the problem causes a problem with obstruction so I just wanted to talk about that because I think earlier I said that I did the valve covers before the intake manifold mainly for that reason but just wanted to correct that. So at this point we should be good. I'll just go ahead and get my 12 millimeter tools and drive these down further. And once that is done, well, what's going to be next? pretty much get the other engine out and once I have the engine out figure out how I'm going to just transfer the harnesses over no we got a few cool things to do over here like the sensors the uh, what do you call the VTC solenoids so we, we do have a few cool things to do I haven't abandoned you guys yet so I'll do that for now I think we should be good. We should be good for now. So I'll just keep the camera rolling and I'll keep doing my thing.
at this point guys we've done pretty much all that we could and should do with the engine on the stand from now on most of what we're gonna do is gonna be more convenient if done off the stand I'm talking about working on the rear replacing uh, reinstalling the ring gear for the starter uh, maybe I could install the starter right now maybe maybe I should do that but you know these are things that could be done at any point really if you if you really look at it objectively um, it should be fine to get off the stand now so that's what my next goal is gonna be get the engine off the stand get it suspended and I'll put in a little bit of work just to get it more and more ready. The fuel injectors that go right here, or rather the fuel rail with the fuel injectors that goes there has not been installed yet. Obviously I'll get to that at some point. There you go. This one, 06 M45, should be here. Got this little hook over here. The hook will find the hole. If I remember correctly, two things are happening. Is it that way? How did this go? This way? This way? No. Close. There you go. Probably oh, got it. I think I got it. I hope it will fit in the hole. Uh, kind of, sort of will. It's a little big, but we'll make it work. Wow, it's a really tight hole. You know what I'm going to do? Break it, damage it, so I can get it in there at least. I'll cut off one of the legs. Try to push it in now. Nope. I should have cut the side, not the leg. Okay, it's in there. So now what I'm going to do is pick this up, tie it right around here. Bingo. Now I need a way to keep it down here. So I have the JDM ones over here and I'm going to use them to get the clips like this one here. <laughs> 